now arriving on track one, the Moonstone Express. The Moonstone Express now arriving on track one. Out there. Thank you. Oh, let me help you with those, sir. Uh, pleasure doing business, young lady. <laughs> I shopped in this store about a thousand years ago. We haven't been open that long. You don't look a day over 40. Uh, I bet you you could charm me into buying anything. <laughs> Come by again tomorrow, sir, and I'll see what I can do. Well, I just might do that. My name is Max. What happened here? Uh, the beehive, it uh, looks kind of empty. I'm going to change all that. The girl has chutzpah. <laughs> Don't worry, we won't get beaten by that discount superstar out on the interstate. That'll be $40. Oh, that's an ugly thing, isn't it? Looks like a giant concrete tomb. But everybody shops there. Not if I can help it. There's my bus. You see what you made me do? You hypnotized me with your beauty. Now who's the charmer? Max, you don't have everything. <laughs> Thank you, Sally Reed, and may all your Christmas dreams come true. How did you know my name? There it is, right there. <laughs> Button up, Mr. Max. It's freezing out there. Excuse me. Anybody named Max here? No Max here, lady. Sorry. Gotta go. Get over here, you jerk. I'm gonna get no, you. You're not. I'm gonna get you. No, you're not. foster home like you did at the last one. This place is stupid trying to get us together, but you can't solve your problems by always fighting. It's going to be Jimmy's social worker. Go change. This is important. I don't have anything to wear. And I just bought you a new pair of pants. Long right. pants. That means they touch your shoes. Go. Is Sally here? I'm sorry, you lose. Yeah, sure. Here, um, can you Can you just take that from me? Thank you. Hi, Sally. Hi, Mrs. Vernon. Did my letters of reference come in? They're all excellent. Your boss was very complimentary, but he would not commit to a new job title or an increase in pay. But he will, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Mr. Marino's a good guy. The state is inflexible on this, Sally. Your income must meet our minimum requirement. But this place is awful for him. When you're 12, there are not a lot of foster care options still available other than a state facility and the statistical odds against finding him a permanent home. Mrs. Home. Vernon, my brother is not a statistic. He needs a permanent home with me. Well, that's not for you to decide, dear. Now, I'm working on some other placements for James. This is Vernon. It's been seven years since our parents died and we were split up. Jimmy can't face another Christmas alone. And neither can I. You give him false hope, and then he acts out. He acts out because he wants to be with me. He's really a sweet kid. I know that's how you see him. He's your brother. But unfortunately, I have a case file that, that states otherwise. Dad, I'm telling you, we're in financial trouble. Because you took out that loan. I, I just, I need to talk to you about this. How can we talk? You are destroying the family business. Goodbye. Dad, don't hang up. Don't, Dad! 
Dad, did you plan to second-guess my every decision when you turned the company over to me? I came to America when I was 18, and it's nothing but the skills my father taught me. I met your mother, and we decided to continue the family business. And now you? You're just turning your back on tradition. That tradition costs us a fortune. We lose money now on every ornament we make. Yeah. Uh, look at the outcry over the laying people off. This bright idea of yours. The newspaper compares you to the devil. Look, we make Christmas ornaments, right? I'm not running a charity. I told you not to take out that law. We had to upgrade the furnaces. Dad, the world's changing. Why don't you get someone in here to help you with this? It's not safe for you to be going up and down the stairs to the washing machine. I don't need help. I'll be out of this place in no time. Dad, come and stay with me. If there's no stairs, it'll only be temporary. I'm not a child. And I won't be staying with a traitor. Ever since Mom died, you've been impossible. Your mother will be heartbroken if she knew what you were doing. Your great-grandparents founded this company. I would hope you would at least try to keep some memory alive. If this company's going to stay alive, it's got to get with the 21st century. Please. I'm automating the plan after the first of the year. think about and I wonder why you're still single what can we do to get people in here I need a gimmick good luck with that Mr. Marino 
The social worker said you weren't committing to the new job title. I can't make a decision about raises or promotions until I see the Christmas sales figures. I turn 25 next week. I'm finally the legal age to adopt my brother, but social services won't approve my application until I get that raise. <laughs> Ed... Jimmy needs to be living with me. He's one step away from a state facility. Then I hope Santa brings you some shoppers. Because I can't give you anything without the sales to back it up. Great. Just what I need. Sally! I know! The fuse blew. I'll go. I need you to see something. Oh, every time you want me to see something, it costs me money. We can be doing better than these windows. What? I know how to make it special will attract a ton of foot traffic. What foot traffic? Everybody's at the mall. You'll come if you give them something to look at. Decorating store windows is a holiday tradition. Haven't you ever been to New York? Yeah, I don't like congestion. Bloomingdale's? Barney's? Marshall Fields in Chicago? Expand your horizons. Look at this. Come in here. This is terrible! You know, I, I don't need window shoppers. Sally, I need people inside the store. We have everything we need in the basement. I've got a whole Norman Rockwell theme in hey, mind. You know I don't like the artsy stuff. We'll call it the Festival of Windows. People will stop, look, and then come inside and shop. Look, it's working already! <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. We're talking about the almighty dollar here. This is a time of the year when the aisle should be jammed. My father always said uh, the dollar is the bedrock upon which we build the beehive. Now there's a man who knew what he was doing. When I was a kid, my parents used to take Jimmy and me down here just to see the beehive windows, toy trains, animated Christmas villages. People came from all over the state. Sales must have been out of this world. He had a vision. Do you? Now arriving on track one, the Moonstone Limited. Moonstone Limited, track one. Joe Hesperides? Nope, sorry. Hesperides? Nope. Joe Hesperides? Uh -huh. Hesperides? Sorry. Hesperides? Hesperides? Yes! Joe Hesperides? Yes. Don't look so disappointed, Max. Well, I wasn't expecting a woman. Oh, don't flatter yourself. Did you actually think he would come down to discipline you? <laughs> I didn't think anything. I got the message. What's the panic? In all my years on the job, this is the first time anyone has had to come down to discipline one of our field agents. Discipline? You have been reprimanded numerous times for your unorthodox methods. Costumes, wigs... Last time it was singing and dancing. This time I don't know what you're supposed to be. We are not actors, Max. Whoever wrote our manual, believe me, never worked in the field. It's colder here than I imagined it would be. Well, that's why they call it winter. Let's go inside. Yes. Stops at Old Town, Medford, Lincoln, 
You don't even know what you did, do you? I'm just doing my job, boss. Don't call me boss. Now, remind me, what was your assignment? Is this a trick question? I am waiting for my answer, Max. Well, my assignment was to help the resident at 606 Main Street, Moonstone Bay, Maine. I have a copy of your official work order. I would like you to look at it again. 909 Main Street. Oh. Holy jamobies. You see what I did? I looked at it upside down. You were supposed to be at 909 Main. There are only four more days to Christmas, and you've cost us two with the wrong person. Does this Sally Reed still have the box? Depends. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe? Maybe not. Well, I am going to go to 606, get the box, and take it to 909 where it belongs. Wait a minute. You can't just come down here and take over. You've never been in the field before. How hard can it be? I can't talk about this anymore. We are on a deadline. When have I ever missed a deadline? Doesn't it strike you as odd that the person at 606 was clueless as to what to do with that box? At first, a client doesn't always know what to do. Sally isn't the client. Are you paying any attention? Absolutely. Everything you say, boss, right in here, like a steel trap. You are very bad for my stats, Max. Very bad. You are off the case. And please, don't call me the boss. I am your middle management supervisor, not the boss. OK, let's get started. There may be some loose ends that we have to tie together. There is no way we are working on loose ends. You are going back to headquarters. You're fired. And Max, turn in your wings. grandfather the other day excuse me uh yes at the store he left a box with you by accident mr max of course come in oh thank you it's right over here <sighs> you opened it sorry but i thought there would be a name or a card inside <sighs> this was not meant for you i know I tried to give it back to your grandfather, but he disappeared. Mm. Tell me, is, is 909 Main nearby? No, it's on the other side of town. 909 is the Hoffman Ornament Factory. Was the box for them? Actually, my grandfather is an old friend of the Hoffman family. I'm an old friend of Carl's. Fascinating. Well, I have to be getting over there. I'd be happy to take you. Oh, no, no. I have this under control. I have a taxi waiting. Good luck with Grandpa. Joe, the necklace! Joe? Checks. With pleasure. You know, this is one job I'm not gonna miss. Can I help you? Oh. Oh. <sighs> Can't have the customers breaking the merchandise. That would wreak havoc on inventory control. And I'm sure these little gems aren't cheap to produce. You sound like an accountant. Accountant, time management consultant, anything to do with numbers. Joe Hesperides. Oh. I I'm looking for Carl Hoffman. Well, that's me. Have we met? My grandfather, Max, is a friend of your family's. Uh, it doesn't ring a bell. 
Well, this present is from him to you. It got sent to the wrong address by accident. I had to track it down. Oh, it's a long story. Longer than the 12 days of Christmas, really. Well, uh, that's very thoughtful of you to go out of your way. Uh, you know, I've never been to an ornament store before. Do you make them here? Actually, the, uh, the factory is out back, but that's uh, not much to see. Oh, don't be so modest. These are absolutely beautiful. I would love to see how you make them. Uh, well, I, I guess it is kind of interesting. Um, I'm sorry, would you like a coffee, tea, hot chocolate? <gasps> hot chocolate would be lovely. Wow, this is beautiful. It's like the Middle Ages. Unfortunately, all this tradition costs us a fortune. The manpower alone. The price point must be killing you. Finally, someone who understands. It's all about the bottom line, Carl. Well, the future awaits. Automation. No more sick days, no more benefit packages, no more pension plans. Who needs employees that never do what they're told? You know, I have a guy on my staff who actually thinks the rules apply to everyone but him. Hmm. Let's open your present. You've seen it before? No, not really. It's empty. Well, I know it's really important to Max that you have that. Well, I can't imagine what connection this has to my family. F.E., who's F.E.? I don't know any F.E. Where did, where did your grandfather get this? Well, I really have no idea. Well, why would he be sending me this box? Grandpa does a lot of strange things. Gee, I, I thought you would have known what to do with it right away. Oh, now, d d don't be hasty. Maybe something will come to you. I don't think so. Ooh. You really seem to be enjoying that hot chocolate. Oh, it's like nothing I've ever had before. Where do you get them? Uh, it's just a powder mix we keep in the lunchroom. Would, would you like another one? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Sally Reed. Hi, Carl. Sorry to disturb you. No. God. Jeez, it's, it's been forever. You look great. Oh, so do you. Uh, what are you doing here? Well, I have... My grandfather left this box with her by accident. You know, I really have this under control, Sally. You did not need to come all the way here. You, you work at the Beehive? I'm assistant manager. Youngest one ever. Well, doesn't surprise me. You always knew what you wanted. Sorry, but you were in such a hurry, I forgot to give you this. It was in the box. It's so beautiful, I tried it on and, well, I forgot to put it back. Carl, are you okay? I had the strangest dream last night. This box was in it and this necklace, too. Mm. Dreams have a purpose. They're a gift from the cosmos. It was nice seeing you again, Carl. You too. Wait, so this is a jewelry box? No, it used to be a jewelry box. I thought you didn't know anything about this. I don't. I, I guess I, um, I, I just thought it had another meaning. I really need to talk to your grandfather about this box. That could be a problem. Like I said, I, I haven't been able to find him. But I know that he meant this box for you. Um, well, how can I thank you for bringing this to me? I'm sure you can think of something. Well, uh, maybe you and I can get together again? How about tonight? Okay, great. Um, 8 p.m. at the Blue Note. It's on Broadway. Oh, okay. Broadway? <laughs> They love your window, especially the train. See that? Huh? Keep this up and you will get promoted to manager. I heard Ladies Intimate Apparel had one of their best days in months. Sales are through the roof. 
<laughs> Marino's over the moon. I mean, he only seems mildly depressed. I don't care. As long as they keep spending. Spend, spend, spend. <laughs> Dolores, do you believe in fate? That sometimes things happen for a reason, even if we don't always understand why? Absolutely. Call it what you like. Divine intervention, kismet, karma, coincidence. Why? I reconnected with someone I always thought I... Ugh, this is silly. Who is he? Remember Carl Hoffman? Oh, how could I forget? You two were inseparable that summer after high school. Yeah, Sally, I need you to do me a favor. Deliver these packages. It's a phone order with short staff. I'm in the middle of doing the windows. Uh, 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 this guy spent a fortune. <laughs> Here's the address, Franz Hoffman. Delivery. I need you to sign for these, Mr. Hoffman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, come in. You, uh, you look familiar. Sally Reed, Carl and I. Of course, I remember now. Carl and you. I don't think he ever got over you. Oh, I've always loved your ornaments. My mom and dad wouldn't put anything else on their tree. I was sorry about your parents, Sally. Oh, uh, since my wife died, I, I haven't been myself. It's not easy being alone. I wish my son understood that. Okay, you can sign for these uh, right here. No, but I didn't place any order. They said you called it in. No. Can I use your phone? Yeah, yeah. Um, in the dining room. Vic, it's Sally. I'm at the Hoffman house with that delivery, but Mr. Hoffman says he never placed the order. What's the name on the credit card? Mr. Max? No, everything's fine. I'll call you back. Who's this Mr. Max? I met him yesterday. He was supposed to deliver a package to Carl, but I ended up with it by accident. No, I don't know any Mr. Max. Now his granddaughter is out looking for him, and he's just vanished. Where did you get this spoon? Ah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Who is F.E.? Fried Langstoss. My mother. I smuggled this out of East Germany when I was a boy. It's the last thing I have of my parents. I don't use it. I just took it out of storage. Has Carl ever seen this? No, I don't think so. Can I show it to him? It's really important. I'm sorry, I gotta go. Sally, come in. I got your page. I have good news. You do? Yes. There's a family in Portland, a good family. They've worked out well for us with some of our more troubled clients. And they're interested in adopting your brother. Adopting? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Vernon, what about my application? These people are ready to go by January 1st. And frankly, Sally, I feel like this is your brother's last and best chance at being a part of a normal family. I am his family. The state has put him in six different placements in the past seven years. All those families looked good on paper. All turned out disastrous. Mrs. Vernon, I am the only one that can get through to him. Doesn't that count for anything? I told you we have rules and regulations. Well, sometimes what's on paper, what's in the manual, doesn't work in the real world. I haven't said anything to him yet. I'm going to wait till after Christmas. But this is going to happen. I'm not going to give up. Sally, as long as he knows you're out there fighting for him, he's never going to commit to another family. Why don't you give him the most wonderful Christmas present you can? Let him go. Excuse me. Can you help me? I'd be delighted. You're right there. Oh. Oh, gee. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you caught me off guard. You are a very 
very, very handsome man. <laughs> Forgive me for being so bold. My name is Maxine, but it's true. You are what is known in the vernacular as a hunk. <laughs> Thank you. All right, enough of that. My name is Maxine. Oh, I think I said that. I'm so nervous. I feel such a fool. How can I help you? Um, I'd like to buy some perfume, please, and I'll need your assistance. Oh, certainly. I take it that this is for the lucky, 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 lucky lady in your life. Uh, it's for someone who did a favor for me. I just want to thank her. Oh, well, that's very sweet. What is she like? Um, well, to tell you the truth, I don't know her that well. Uh, she has a wonderful smile. Ah, well, something light and fresh. I would think floral, okay. but subtly so. A civil, but not too lightweight. I have a product in stock. It's called Wild on the Beach. Oh. <laughs> Slow down there. I hardly know her. Oh, well, unfortunately, courtship is a fading art, but in this case, I would recommend it. Well, I'm all for courtship, but I think it's a bit early for uh, Wild on the Beach. Well, what we could try is matching up the fragrance with her lifestyle. What is it that she does? Uh, Joe's an accountant of some kind. Joe? Joe Hesperides. Joe Esperides. Well, perhaps your little Joe would like something bitter, something acidic. What? Oh, the toilette. The box says it's from France. They make it in Scranton. It's basic, almost boring, perfect for a middle management numbers cruncher. Saturday, $50. Maxine, I forgot about a gift card. Can I help you? Uh, sorry, where's the, uh, the other lady who's working here, Maxine? There's no Maxine working here, sir. What kind of card would you like? Excuse me. Is Carl around? He's not out front. He's gone home. Who goes home at 2 o'clock? When you're the boss, you can take as much personal time as you like. It's personal? I think he's got a big date tonight. You know, without accounting lady. Is there a message you'd like me to give him? No. Uh, it's something I want to tell him in person. Thanks. To chance meetings? To your grandfather. <gasps> to mistaken deliveries and upside down addresses. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, do you know, I just love the way the little bubbles climb up the side of the glass. Haven't you had enough? Mm, this is the most spectacular thing I've ever tasted. I have something for you. A gift? For me? Oh, how wonderful. Oh, it's French. You went out of your way for my family. I wanted to thank you properly. Oh, do you know, no one has ever given me perfume before. Oh. <laughs> Here, smell. Oh. Ah. <clears throat> Might want to go easy on that. Oh, you just have no idea how much this means to me. Joe, I, I have a few more questions about your grandfather. Do we have to talk about Max? I need to know more about that box. It obviously has some significance, but I don't know what to do with it. Carl, I love that tie. Let me see that tie. Did you? Oh, oh, oh. look. It matches your eyes. <laughs> Joe, where do you find it? How did he know it belonged to my family? Let's dance. No, Joe, no, I don't dance. I'm not a good dancer. Now think, Joe, the box. Uh, are you sure your grandfather didn't say anything to you about the box? Now, come on, I see your foot tapping under the table. Oh, no, it's a nervous disorder. It's like a facial tic. No, I don't, I don't know. Joe, 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 no. Whoop! <laughs> Here we go. Now, now, teach me, teach me. <laughs> go! Oh, oh, Ow. Uh, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Ow! Oh, oh. <laughs> It sits there on my desk like, like it's staring at me. What are you talking about? It's a box. I really need to meet Max. Oh, Carl, can't we please just dance? Oh. <laughs> 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 I've gone through 
through the company database, our mailing list, even my dad's Christmas card book. I can't find Max Hesperides anywhere. Now, if he's truly a friend of the family... He's I... gone, Carl. Out of sight, out of mind, out of town. Well, how do you know that? Because he went back to headquarters. Headquarters? I'm gonna level with you. Headquarters is a code word for a nursing home in upstate New York. Max hates it there. He's always checking himself out and disappearing. And I really do think that it was the right place to put him, but sometimes, sometimes... <laughs> I'm sorry. I, uh, I need to Can't we just not talk about Max and dance? Okay. to come up for a nightcap. I think you've had enough to drink, Joe. You need to crawl into bed and sleep this one up. Tuck me in, big boy. Oh, no, thank you, Joe. Please? Joe, is there something you're not telling me? Like what? I feel like you're holding something back. <laughs> oh! <gasps> Does that feel like I'm holding something back? Uh, this is moving too fast for me, Joe. I I I'd like to be your friend and get to know you better. Oh, you'll change your mind. Thank you for a magnificent evening, Mr. Hoffman. Way. Thanks. Home by 10 o'clock? Not a very promising date. How'd you know? Word gets out. What is that horrible smell? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna have to burn these clothes. So, was it a disaster? Let's see. Joe got a little drunk, danced all over my feet with her stiletto heels, made bizarro statements about her grandfather, nearly sucked the life out of me with a kiss, and tried to get me up to her room. Sounds like love at first sight. Well, I only asked her out in hopes of getting more information about him in that box. That's why I wanted to talk to you. I found out who F.E. is. What? Friedel Einstos. You know, your grandmother's maiden name. That's right. What, how did you find out? Your dad had a piece of silver flatware he brought over from Germany. It has the initials F.E. on it. What were you doing at my dad's? I went to deliver a load of Christmas gifts from the beehive that he never ordered. They were paid for by Mr. Max. Who is this guy? I don't know, but we should show the box to your dad. You wanna? Well, it's down at the showroom. I'll get this, get the security guard to lock up. Right. Looks like you've got yourself a second date. Used to be a jewelry box. Used to be. Oh, look at the joinery here on the bottom. The grain's different. It's hollow. Try this. Thanks. That's weird. <laughs> Turn it over. What 
is it? Nobody can afford to do this kind of detail work anymore. Berlin, 1962. That's, that's my father's a boy. And is that your grandparents? I think so. I, I've never seen them before. You have to talk to your father. Hello? Miss Marina, what's up? Oh, no. The beehive's on fire. I gotta go. What could this happen? I still don't know. At least we're able to contain it in the window. It's gonna spread inside the store. Thank goodness there wasn't any smoke damage. We were so worried the city were working late. No, when I left, there was just that new security guard on duty. They can't find him anywhere. Could Christmas get any worse? I think we may have found a couple. The train transformer? Transformer? It can't be. I disconnected the wires. I, I even unplugged it. She did, sir. I saw her. It's nine o'clock. You still in bed? I thought I told you to go back to headquarters. Did someone have too much to drink last night? I have this horrible pounding in my head. That's known as a hangover. I remember the first one I had. Randy Alexander. Boy, that was some night. Why didn't you warn me? There's a downside to being human, Joe. You needed to learn that for yourself. Here, potassium. Good for you. No food. No, eat it. You'll feel better. Oh. <sighs> he smiled at me, Max. And I got butterflies in my stomach. Can you tell me where in the operations manual it is stated that falling in love with a client is suitable conduct? He bought me French perfume. All uh, right. And what did you do? Food. Did you take a shower in it? It was such an enchanted evening. I have other plans for Carl. Stay away from him. He will break your heart. Boy, I really made a mess of things. Yes, ma'am, you did. I need your help, Max. I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Joe, could you say that louder? Oh, come on. Now, don't make me say it again. Look, if you want to work as a team to salvage this thing, there are certain rules you're going to have to obey. No more dating. No more perfume. No more champagne. D no don't more... say hot chocolate, please. Just one vice. None. Zippo. Rules are rules. <sighs> okay. Okay. Deal. We got a lot of work to do in two days. I have just one question. Did you start that fire at the beehive? There was a short in the Transformer. And Carl's dream? You asked for one question. Come on, we're partners. Get dressed. And I'll let you watch a master at work. Anyway, I'm glad I caught you, Sally. You know, I tried to talk to him, but he hung up on me. Did you tell him about the box? I couldn't get a word in. Well, keep trying, Carl. I don't know if I can. You have to. I think about all the times I wanted to get away from my little brother and my parents. I wanted to be my own person, have my own life, right? You knew me then. And then one day, they were gone. Just like that. Everything I wanted to run away from was all I wanted back. Now. I have to fight for what's left. I know that you love your dad, Carl, but it goes so fast. Don't let him slip away. 
When my mom passed away, I knew my dad needed help. That's why I gave up my job in New York and came home, but... You're telling me it's like he doesn't want me here. Anyway, I had no idea you moved back, too. I still think about that summer after you graduated. Remember? Every minute of it. Do you remember that night at the Falls? It's hard to forget. Did you ever wonder what, what might have... I don't go there, Carl. The accident changed everything. Sorry. Sorry. I gotta go. I'll talk to your dad for you. Yeah. I promise. Where did you get your sister, Jimmy? I made these, one for Christmas and one for her birthday. Oh, wow, this is beautiful. This is your whole family, right? Is that you? <laughs> From the heart, there's nothing better. You just glued a bunch of dumb pictures on a cardboard. What kind of crappy gift is that? You're a jerk. <laughs> with you. fishing trip. Dad gave me Grandpa's old fishing pole. He was so proud of you. We had that new camper. <laughs> Daddy loved that thing. Didn't Mom get the flu or something? She was sick as a dog. But she never said anything because she didn't want to ruin our trip. It rained for three days. It was damp and cold, but she never once complained. She was a nice person, wasn't she? They both were. Sometimes I have trouble remembering your face. I miss them. So do I. Is it always going to feel like this? Hope not. Hey, what do you say? We get some glue. We fix this stuff. Nobody can fix it. I don't give up that easily, Jimmy. They're supposed to be for Christmas and your birthday. Last time I checked, neither one was canceled. <laughs> Good one. We can do this together. So, why am I blessed with a visit from you? Your son needs to talk to you, Franz. I've had it with him. It's Christmas. <laughs> it's a day just like any other day. The man who spent a lifetime making the holidays beautiful for other people doesn't want to celebrate it himself. Christmas was lost for me many years ago. But he's your son. And you and Carl still have each other. You have a family business that's more glue than most people ever have. Please just give him a chance. 
I don't know how to fix it between us. I just talk to him. Why don't I have a daughter like you? You have a son like me, and he loves you very much. supposed to be doing for me. Is it a lie, too? What are you talking about? I don't want to live in Portland. Uh, let me explain, Jimmy. How are you and I going to go fishing again? Jimmy, please. Put the Russian hat on this guy. Uh, no, try the earmuffs. Why didn't you tell me? I'm doing everything I can to make this work. You promised me. I don't want to spend all the Christmas with strangers. I want the same thing. Oh, Sal, you're right. This is so cute. The horse in a second. All you care about is your job and money and this... Stupid story. That's not true. You're a liar. There's only one thing I want for Christmas, and you can't buy it for me at the beehive. Look, Jimmy, I need to finish up this window, and then I'm going to ask Mr. Marino if I could get off early. Go away from me in the office. Jimmy, we can't lose hope. I didn't come here to argue, Dad. It's what we do best. Truth is... I came to ask you some questions about this box. This was my mother's. Frida Langstorff. You never told me about this. You barely have sad memories. Nicholas, my papa made it for my mother. Go ahead. From the guy uh, Sally told you about Max. And where did he find it? Dad, I don't know. Why wasn't this one finished? It was Christmas Eve. The communists were cracking down on his crowd. I'm almost finished. Should I put the other one in the box? Yes, Franz, thank you. Careful. I've heard another family was arrested for putting up holiday lights. Now the communists want to take Christmas away from us too. Neil! Joseph! We have to leave now. It's tomorrow. Christmas Day. He's arrested Leopold. Come, the tunnel is ready. We haven't packed. There's no time now. Get the ornaments and hurry. And no suitcases. Be careful with the ornaments, Franz. There's the sixth one. There's no time. Hurry, we must hurry. Here, put this in your pocket. It was so beautiful. It, it doesn't was... matter. Be silent. Now come. Where are we going? To the rest. Franz, smile at the police officer. You 
loose up. Come here. Papers. What's happening? I do not know. Come with me. He wanted to know why I wasn't working. I told him it was Christmas Eve. Who works on Christmas Eve? Sweet on the other side, I promise you, son. Papa! Angel! Oh, Papa! No! I'll be fine. Help me up. Fridon, is it broken? Franz, I'll follow along. The police are coming! You must go now! I'll carry you. We'll never make it. Is there a problem, officer? What are you doing here? Since you've got to go on without us. You must. No, not alone. I'm not leaving you here. Go. Go. Go with you. I'm not leaving you here. You'll be safe with you. I feel it. Keep it safe for me, Franz. Until we meet again. Go. Go. Take the ornament, son. Again. Dad, I had a dream about this box and someone running for his life in a tunnel. The church in Leipzig where my parents were married. This tray painted by my father's father. It dates back to probably 1920. Our family in snow. And your father never finished this one. But you could. No. Why not? I gave that up. You have a talent, girl. You need to believe in yourself. Right here in this box, Carl, this is your heritage. You can do it. You know, downstairs, way before your time, in women's shoes. Please stop doing that. What are you doing? There was a time when everybody could buy something from that store and be happy. Money buys happiness. It's often cynical for somebody so young and busy. So how's it working out for you, huh? You raking it in? We're not selling anything here. I might as well give it away. That sounds like a great program. Right. Program to get fired. Oh. Stores never give anything away. Oh, yeah. But they expect you to shop till your pockets are empty. But we never give anything back. And we say we have a spirit of Christmas. Oh, I'm cold. I'm, I'm really cold. <laughs> Would you wait here a minute? Yeah, I got all the time in the world. Stand up. Honey, honey, you can't. Come 
on, put this on. Micah, but you can't do this. You know, they're going to dock your salary. You can't tell this is so nice. Oh, oh my, they're going to get fired. They're going to take away your money. Then what are you going to do? Catch your death in those shoes. Sit down. <laughs> you know, you, you must have worked in footwear. I started out as a floater oh. in the good one. I mean, nobody's ever done anything like this for me. Oh my God, this is expensive. You know what? True happiness is not for sale. Merry Christmas from the Beehive. Shiver, quick. Shiver. I gotta go. Thank you. Oh, oh I, I have to go. They might even... Jimmy, I haven't seen him since before. I I'll look for him. Okay. Mr. Reno, is my brother in the office? Uh, no, but I heard there's a half-naked mannequin in the window. Somebody said you gave away the clothes. Not now. Not now? That, that, that was a wool coat, Italian leather boots. You have any idea of the retail of that? A lot of money. And there was a cashmere scarf, too. It's a new program, sir. You can't put a price tag on compassion. Jimmy! Did you find him? Not anywhere. Okay, I, I bet he went home. Will you cover for me? Yeah, of course. Yeah? Is Jimmy here? I ain't seen him all day, but he left a note for you. He's back here. Candy in there, Snickers or something, but nothing with coconut, because it gets in my teeth. This is my food. Back off of it, man. Oh, tough guy, huh? Where are you headed? Mexico. Ah, Margaritaville. I like tacos. Ah, that's a good reason. What, are you running from the law? With your wife and kids? I'm only 12, mister. You got enough pesos for a ticket? I'm a little short. A lot short. I can get you a ticket and some spare change. Follow me. Coastal Express is now arriving on track three. You see that ticket guy there? He keeps a lot of cash on hand. What's your angle? Oh, a tough guy and a wise guy. I need a diversion. A kid like you would be great. You want in? Where is it? Local to Portland, leaving on track two, all aboard for the Portland local. I create a commotion. You run in. Then, when you get there and you got the dough, you put it in this. Come on, give me a break. I stole it for my grandkid, okay? Final call for Portland, all aboard. The security guard's got a gun. Somebody could get killed. Cost of doing business. What if he sees me? Freedom don't come cheap. How bad you want out of this backwater town? I want out of here. Well, you gotta be tough. Like you? You stole a pillowcase from your grandson. Mister, 
This is a stupid idea. I don't know anybody in Mexico, and I only have enough candy bars to last me three days. Three days? That'll get you to shy town. Nobody wants me there either. Last chance. I'm your ticket to freedom. Excuse me, is this the donation area? Uh, sir, the, the Goodwill's down the street. Uh, no, no, uh, we heard about a woman who works here, Sally Reed. She's giving stuff away. Terrific idea and so convenient. <laughs> what are you talking about? The giveaway program. For those who can't afford Christmas. I love it. I can do all my Christmas shopping here at the Beehive and give a little something to the needy, too. God bless you. <laughs> the Beehive's a wonderful store. So we've got everything you need? Uh, his, his picture, birth certificate. What if the police can't find him? Excuse me, have you seen this boy? Uh-uh, no. Sally, Sally, look, the police will issue an APD. They'll get his photo out there. And it's just a question of time. Um, Sally, I'll, I'll be right in, all right? Hey! been looking all over for you. Carl, I, I, I really have to go. I, I got a tip that Gramps is headed home. Oh, great. Let me come with you. I want to thank him. Why? That box contains my family's legacy, but it's about my future, too. That's right. Joe, it's time you were straight with me. Who are you? Oh, Carl, please, I really have to go. No, please. Just tell me, what are you and Max doing here? Don't start with the fake tears. I didn't buy it the first time. <laughs> They're not fake. I. Oh, sorry. You know, Carl, this whole thing has been. Um, well, you know, I'm, I'm not very experienced with goodbyes, and I feel like my heart is broken. I've never felt that before. Oh, I'll never forget our date. Me neither. You have such a beautiful spirit. If only you could see it the way I do. word yet? No. We've been looking all over for him. I'm filing a missing persons report. Why didn't you call me immediately? I, I thought I could handle it. You can forget about your application. Mrs. Vernon, please. But he's her brother. Well, her brother is missing. What if something's happened to him? And who are you, anyway? I'm someone who knows this woman loves her brother more than just about anything. Well, when we find him, this won't be her problem anymore. Sally hasn't shown me she can be a responsible parent. Isn't it your responsibility to keep families together? My responsibility is to do the right thing for this child. The right thing for Jimmy is to be with me. I'm his only family. You have to give her a second chance. We're beyond second chances here. I'm sorry, Sally. All right. You got everything down? The minute you start calling out for a doctor, I rush the ticket booth. Yeah. And you grab the money and you run. And I'll meet you out back. Train arriving from Derry, New Hampshire. What are you doing? Train. What are you standing there? What's the matter with you, kid? I, I, I don't know. What are you, a wuss? I'm giving you a chance to change your life. Okay, okay, let's go. Synchronize our watches. I don't have a watch. Then count the ten. One, two, three, four. Can I help you on that? Five. Pardon me? Six, seven, eight. No! 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 Hey, we need some help. Get it done. What? Get it done. Someone call 911. Stand back, please. Stand back. Give him some room. <laughs> Ready to go live right away, Mr. Marino. Oh, one second. Presents? Great work, Sally. What is going on? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You had a plan all along, and I doubted you. <laughs> what are all these presents doing here? Sally! Why are all these... You won't believe this. 
people saw you get close to that homeless lady and thought it was part of the Festival of Windows. Brilliant. It was brilliant. You turned us into a festival of giving. Elsie Von Dolan, Channel 2, Evening News. We're here at the Beehive, the hive of activity in downtown Moonstone Bay, where a spontaneous outpouring of goodwill has the whole town talking. So whose idea was this, Mr. Marino? It was my manager friend. and store owner, right? Sally Reed, assistant manager. It was all her. Yeah, it, it, it was all her. Sally, what inspired you? I met a homeless woman here. She was in rags. And she smelled terrible. And she wouldn't shut up. I just wanted her to leave. I was busy. But she was so cold, she had nothing on. So I went and grabbed a coat, scarf, and some boots that were in the window. And I gave them to her. You know, we're all asking for something from each other. And I'm not talking about a pair of socks or a new toaster. I'm talking about doing what you can, when you can, to make someone feel a little better. And this is nice. But what I need for Christmas isn't anything you can buy at the Beehive or at any other store. A homeless lady taught me how to listen to my heart again and how to see the people that are right in front of me. I just hope it's not too late because my little brother is missing. His name is Jimmy and he's a wonderful boy. I hope maybe someone can find him and bring him here because I just want to hug him and tell him how much I love him. I'm listening, Jimmy. If you're out there somewhere watching this, please come home. You're my family. You're all I got. Please, please come home. You've been my family proud, Sally. Well, I'm glad, Mr. Marino. And, and that promotion? You consider it done. You're the new manager of the Beehive. That was beautiful. You've done a wonderful thing, Sally. Carl, I'm glad you're here. Sally was doing, and I, I knew that you would be here. You were right. About what? We've got to keep our family tradition, especially at Christmas. But also new equipment. Look, maybe we'll market a less expensive line. Yes, that's, that's right. That yeah. can help pay for the, the ones we still want to make by hand. I know I saw someone. Deserve to go with that family. Maybe that's best for me. You're not going anywhere. You're my little brother. And I'm always, always going to be here for you. You understand me? That's the best thing for you. <sighs> Mr. Max, we've been looking all over for you. Does Joe know you're here? Who's Joe? Don't do that to me. I know who you are. And who is that? Max 
Maxime. Hey, you're the guy at the train station. You sold me that horrible perfume. Wait a minute. How can I be all these people? You were the woman behind the sales counter. You know, I've been called a lot of things in my life, but nobody has ever called me a woman. <laughs> uh, I, I'd like you to meet my, my father, Franz. Franz? Well, Franz, it's good to meet you. Who's you? Any spell to You took me by the hand. You saved my life. I never forgot your face. I had the same face 40 years ago. You were the man in the tunnel. What tunnel? <laughs> Buddy, I'm claustrophobic. I wouldn't go into a tunnel if my life depended upon it. But listen, folks, I really gotta get going. Wait, you need to stay. Look what you've done for us. I'm sorry, Sally. But this is a very busy night for me. You follow your family's tradition. You keep painting those ornaments. Max, wait! Say goodbye. Oh, Max. I couldn't. The tears wouldn't stop. Now look at me. I'm a mess. I'm on you, Maxine's waterproof mascara. Works like magic. It's a beautiful night. Yeah, it's beautiful until you have to shovel this stuff up. <laughs> I brought you something. Extra marshmallow. Merry Christmas, Joe. Merry Christmas, Max. You know, something's been bothering me. The way this whole thing fits. Sally and Carl. The box and his father. You didn't mix up those addresses, did you? When have I ever mixed anything up? You could have cost us our wings. Worked out pretty good, though, didn't it? This time. I hear there's an opening for a field work position. Oh, horrors. No. <laughs> no. I thought something like this might happen. Maybe I could apply. These humans are extraordinary creatures. We could work together again. Time to go. This could be the start of something big. <laughs> it's snowing. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, how would you and your brother like to celebrate Christmas with us? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a lovely idea. It's midnight. It's officially Christmas. <laughs>